Hello everyone, welcome to MedEvice. In this video, we're going to be studying about the zones of the lungs. So let's start. So the first question that arises is that why do these zones even exist? And the easy answer to this question is gravity. Let me explain why. So here you have a lung and let's say here you have a heart. So you already know that the pulmonary arteries carry the deoxygenated blood from the heart to the lungs to get oxygenated. But important to remember is that the perfusion of the lungs is not equal throughout the lung. This is because of gravity. So comparatively, the apex will receive less amount of blood while the middle portion of the lung will receive more amount of blood and the base is going to receive maximum amount of blood. So if someone asks you which part of the lung receives most amount of blood, your answer will be that the base receives the most amount of blood. So now what are some of the important points that you should know about this? So the perfusion will be maximum at the base and lowest at the apex. This we have just learned. Then the amount of blood in a vessel is directly proportional to the pressure. So let's say we have a vessel and we have only small amount of blood in it. The pressure that it is going to exert on the walls of the vessel will also be less. But now let's say we have another vessel and here we have a lot of blood. So now the pressure that is going to be exerted here will also be more. This is the reason that the arterial and venous pressure will be maximum in the vessels that supply the base. Why? Because the vessels that supply the base have the most amount of blood. Now there are three other important things that you should know about. So whenever I will mention the P capital A, this is the alveolar pressure. Then the P small a is the arterial pressure. Please don't get confused between them. Finally, the PV is the venous pressure. So now there can be three scenarios in front of us. So in the first scenario, let's say that the alveolar pressure is more than the arterial and venous pressure. What do you think is going to happen here? So because of the high pressure in the alveolus, it is going to compress the vessels. If the vessels get compressed, no perfusion is going to take place. Now there can be another scenario too. Here let's say that the alveolar pressure is less than both arterial and venous pressure. So here the vessels are not going to get compressed and the blood flow will occur. So this is easy to understand. Now I'll give you a third scenario. What happens if the alveolar pressure is less than the arterial pressure but more than the venous pressure? This will be answered in 2 minutes from now. So finally, jumping on to the zones of the lungs. So the lungs can be divided into three zones. You have zone 1, zone 2 and zone 3. So we are going to look at each of them specifically. Starting with the zone 1. So the zone 1 is not usually present in a normal healthy person. What do we find here? So what I like to call is that the formula of this zone is this. So here the alveolar pressure is more than both arterial and venous pressure. And what did we just learn? We learned that if the pressure in an alveolus is more than that in the vessels, this pressure is going to compress the vessels. And so no perfusion is going to take place here. And why is the arterial and venous pressure low here? We have already learned this in the start. It's because of the gravity or that the perfusion in this area is low. Now another important point dead space will be created since gas exchange will not be able to take place. So what do I mean by this? So since there is no perfusion and no blood is coming in this area, the air that is in the alveolus will stay there. It will not be exchanged. So if the air is there and it is not coming in the blood, this is what we will call as dead space. So dead space is associated with zone 1, important to remember. So if this zone 1 is not present in a normal healthy person, when is it seen? So it can be seen in certain conditions like blood loss and positive pressure ventilation. Now why is this? So let's go back to our formula. So what do we see in blood loss? So in blood loss, the arterial pressure becomes low, right? So if the arterial pressure will become low, comparatively, the alveolar pressure will be high. And if that happens, this pressure is going to crush the vessels and no perfusion will be taking place, thus creating the formation of zone 1. Now what happens in positive pressure ventilation? Here, the alveolar pressure is more than usual. 
If this happens, it is again going to crush the vessels thus leading to the formation of zone 1. Now coming to zone 2. So this is seen from the apex to the middle of the lung. What is the formula here? So here the arterial pressure is more than the alveolar pressure but the alveolar pressure is more than the venous pressure. So this was the third scenario that we were looking at in the start. Let's see what will happen here. So here the venous side will remain compressed but the arterial side will remain open and the blood flow will be intermittent. Now what do I mean by this? So you know that we have two phases the systole and the diastole. So during systole when the heart is pushing the blood the pressure is high. This high pressure will open the venous obstruction and the blood will flow. But in diastole when the heart is relaxing the pressure is less. Due to this less pressure the venous obstruction will not open and the blood will not flow. So in one phase it is flowing and in one it is not. This is why we call this as intermittent flow. Now another important point is that the waterfall effect is seen in zone 2. What is this waterfall effect? So during systole the arterial pressure overcomes the obstruction as we know and the blood just falls at the level of the vein. But the most important thing that you should know is that this waterfall effect is seen in zone 2 of the lung. Next coming to zone 3 of the lung. So this is seen from the middle to the base of the lung. What is our formula here? So here the arterial pressure is more than the venous pressure which is more than the alveolar pressure. So basically the pressure in the vessels is more than the alveolar pressure. So here the blood flow will be continuous meaning both during systole and diastole. So summarizing our video, in the zone 1, the alveolar pressure is maximum. This is why no blood flow will take place. In zone 2, the arterial pressure is more than the alveolar pressure which is more than the venous pressure. This is why intermittent blood flow will take place. And in zone 3, the alveolar pressure is the least. This is why continuous blood flow is going to take place. Now let's finish off this video with a few questions. In which zone of the lung does ventilation exceed perfusion during normal physiological conditions? Zone 1, 2, 3, 4. So if you want, you can pause the video and try to answer this first. So here the question is, in which zone does ventilation exceed perfusion? So this is the zone 1, right? Because we know that due to the effect of gravity, least amount of perfusion takes place in the apex. So option A is our correct answer. Next, which of the following statements about zone 3 of the lung is correct? It is the most ventilated zone of the lung. It is located at the lung apices. Blood flow exceeds ventilation in this zone or it is primarily affected during positive pressure ventilation. So here, the correct answer is option C blood flow exceeds the ventilation in this zone. Again why? Due to the effect of gravity. Next, which zone of the lung is commonly known as the dead space zone? Zone 1, 2, 3 or 4. So as I had explained in the start, in zone 1, there is no perfusion taking place. So the air in a way is trapped inside the alveolus. So due to that, our correct option is option A or zone 1. Now our final question, the waterfall effect in pulmonary circulation primarily occurs in which zone of the lung? Zone 1, 2, 3 or 4? And I think we all know the answer to this. The correct option is option B. That's it for this video. If you have any doubts, so please leave them in the comments or feel free to message on Instagram anytime. The link to my Insta is in the description. Thank you.